Why don't you want to remember? Because they'll kill me faster than these things will if I do. Yeah, but why would they have told you and the others in the book about the ship if they didn't want you to know anything about it? Is it possible that there is no hidden craft, that you're using this to block out what really happened that night? I've made up a lot of far-fetched stories in my time, Doctor, but this ain't one of them. There is an alien vessel. It's here, right now. How can you be so certain? You remember so little of that night. I feel it. That would hardly stand the test of reason. You put me under, Doctor. You heard what I said. Was I lying under hypnosis? The patient refuses to let go of his alien abduction experience, even under hypnosis. He still holds on to his story. His descriptions and his responses are consistent time after time. I'm concerned that there may be a psychosis, which we have not yet discovered, which would account for his increasing levels of paranoia. How was your average street cop? Name, Jack Breslin. Then I met your average, not bad looking alien from another planet who crashed on Earth and is stuck here. We work pretty well together. Because I know my way around and, well, she can read minds, among other things. rather than walk in any conventional manner. Their movements were extremely quick and precise. Jack, are you listening to this? Uh-huh. The ship's corridors hung suspended without any visible means of support, were lit without any perceptible source of light. Jack, you're not listening to me. No, I'm listening. I'm writing my reports and I'm listening. Go ahead. I felt as if I were being transported through an almost womb-like enclosure so great were the conflicting sensations of luminosity and obscurity. Do you hear this? Doesn't this sound exactly like... What? Why are you getting yourself all worked up over this stuff? Jack, you were there. You were on one of our mother's ships. How would you describe it? It was big. Jack, no. This is the way you would describe no, it. No, I would describe it as big, like the stack of work I've got to get done before we leave town tomorrow. Jack, the beings on the ship that Calvin describes Sound exactly like a race on my planet, the Xantorians. No kidding, Xantorians. I didn't know they were still around. You're teasing me, aren't you? Why don't you take this seriously? 
Because this is not about the Xantorians, okay? It's about a number one bestseller. Charles Calvin has written six of these books, all science fiction. That's fiction as in made up. Now, all of a sudden, he writes this new book, which he claims is true, nonfiction. But if you look through these pages, you'll see it's all the same stuff that's in the other six books. Come on, the, the flying saucers and laser beams and time travelers. There's and... nothing in here about time travel, Jack. You know it's not possible. Well, whatever. The bottom line is this guy is still making up stories, whether they're nonfiction or not. There are things in here, Jack. I mean, descriptions of the ship, their methods of transport, communications that couldn't have been made up. Well, maybe not by a rotor rooter man, but they could be made up. But what if there is a ship hidden nearby? Yeah, what if the cow jumped over the moon? I don't believe bovine would have the necessary musculature. Oh, yeah, I guess you could be right about that. Is 300 a day plus expenses a fair price, Jack? I could live with it. Wait, wait a minute. 300 a day plus expenses for what? A1 investigations. Discreet, dependable, determined. We look into all the places you don't want to. I should laugh, right? Jack, I have to find Charles Carvey. Now, I've got to talk to him. You know, if there's even a chance... Come on, I thought you wanted to go fishing with me up to Lake Hansen. I want to go home. Wagons out front, loaded and ready to go, Jack. Parked in a great space. No one around the dinghy. I promise I'll be careful, buddy. Did you find anything on him, Trish? Not yet, but I can't believe you're actually going to meet Charles Calvin. He's my absolute favorite author. Uh, yeah, he's mine, too. Personally, I have every confidence in you, Jack. There's just a thing or two I'd like to go over. First off, any birds do their number on the car, clean it off right away. You know how it eats the paint? Oh, have you read his latest book? He actually claims he went up in a spaceship with some other people and they went all around. But now they can't remember anything like where or when. And now, practically all of them have died, except Charles Calvin himself. Can you believe that? Actual aliens. Yeah, and the floor mats. I just had them shampooed, so try and not track any mud in. I got it. No bird crap, no mud. Right? And as far as caught fish go, make sure they're double wrapped on ice in the cooler. Nasty stench never leaves the upholstery. You mean I can't sit them up in the back seat with a little safety belt on? Joke if you want to, Jack. But that car is in better shape now than when I bought it, and that's no accident. Jack! Yeah? I think you could get him to autograph this for me. Oh, well, sure. You guys sure look busy. My report's Vic. Oh. Uh, duty calls. Keep it under 60, Jack. Thanks again, Mark. What are you doing? What are you running here, Jack? Nothing. Information keeps looping back to Charles Calvin's publisher. Charles Calvin, the author? I mean, the guy that writes those, uh, those alien books? I'm doing a favor here. Right. Joe, I understand you. Huh? You know, it's kind of like, kind of like having an owner's manual for maintaining an alien in your very own home, huh? I don't know how to explain it, but Charles Calvin's coming up a big zero. Sorry, Jack. I'm sorry, but I can't give out that information on Mr. Calvin. Look, I got the same spiel from the receptionist, his editor's secretary. And I'm afraid you're going to get it from me. Mr. Calvin is one of our most valued clients, and his aversion to press and publicity are widely known. Now, your badge looks real enough, and if you'd like, I'll call down to the department. If somebody uh, can uh, tell uh, me Look, I don't want to blow this whole thing out of proportion. You see, it's more of a... Well, it's more of a kind of... Personal concern to right. verify some information that was in his book. You see, Detective Breslin has had some experience dealing with aliens, and... Tara. Yes, I understand. We've had quite a few concerned citizens who'd like to talk to him about similar experiences, Detective Wrestling. And we're concerned for his safety. His safety? His safety? Oh, yes. The tribe he describes are a very violent people who would stop at nothing and wipe out the whole world. <clears throat> but you never said anything about the Xantorians being a violent group. Well, like, you never seem interested, Jack. I mean, not that there was such a thing. You never mentioned that there were space killers. If you'll excuse me for a minute. Hey, he wants to find this guy anyway, if he's got intergalactic Apaches after him. Well, we can find him, Jack. He lives at Bear Mountain, except he's under another name. Dixon Thursby? Why use Charles Calvin if that is a false name? You read her mind. Yes, but I don't understand. She was thinking his real name while she was trying not to tell us anything. Well, a lot of writers use fake names. So, see, he's safe. I mean, if these Antorians don't know who he really is, then they can't find him. So where are we going? To find Mr. Thursby. Any guy that can cause me that much grief deserves my personal attention. These, uh, Xantorians, uh, in case we run into them, I mean, how am I gonna recognize them? They have, like, horns growing from their heads, or they breathe fire or something. Jack, they don't breathe fire. I mean, quite frankly, if they have their cranial fangs retracted, they look like anybody else on this planet. 
I mean, nobody would be able to tell, except, of course, for their eyes. Why, what do they do, glow in the dark or something? Well, I suppose it is possible under these atmospheric conditions, but it's the distinctive additional folds of their eyelids that would more likely give them away. Is something wrong? No, no, not at all. The heat was incredibly intense, and the sand gave way beneath my feet with each laborious step. Physically, I'm quite certain I never felt the cramped, almost claustrophobic confines of the circular room. But mentally, I was transported to the site of their hostage spacecraft. The combined sense of acute claustrophobia and agoraphobia gave me a sensation of being sucked into an infinite void. It terrified and held me mesmerized beyond words. Beings who I could sense more than actually see had the uncanny ability to convey thoughts without speaking. Is something wrong? No, I was, uh, well, I was just thinking for a second. I don't know, you got me thinking there are Santorians everywhere. And finally, I got my first look at the ship's guidance system. A series of green crystals illuminated a sparse control panel before me. Green crystals, Jack. Xantorian energy beacons. Why would these Xantorians pick this group of people anyway? Not that I believe any of these green crystals aside. Why would you not believe it, Jack? I'm an alien. You believe in me? Yeah, but you don't have, like, a cranial fang or anything. Do you? I mean, you told me that they could hide theirs. No, Jack, they're ugly things. Scars and look like the lunar surface. He's on a 745 to Mars. Yes. Can I help you? Yeah, a guy in town said that Dixon Thursby lives here. Yes, he does. What do you want from him? I need to talk to him about the ship in this book. Well, I'm very sorry. I'm Dixon Thursby, and I've never read your book. Uh, we know that you wrote this book. We also know that you're Charles Calvin. What are you talking about? Who, who, who told you that? We're the police. We want to talk to you. Why? Am I in some sort of trouble? How, how did you get my name? Was it through Paula at the publishing Relax, office? We are. We're not going to let anybody know about this place. The last thing we want to do is be connected. Now we, we just want to talk to you. Come in. You seem to have undergone some type of transformation since this photograph was taken. That's my publisher's nephew. I didn't want to deal with the garbage that goes along with being recognized. But they insisted on having a picture, so. Hey, make up a story. And I make up an author. If you think I made all of this up, then why are you here? Because I believe your story is true, Mr. Thursby. What's this? Others who also believe it's true. Self-proclaimed aliens, crackpots who want to know if Elvis was also on board. Was Elvis on board, too? I only want to know the location of the vessel you described. Obviously, you didn't read the book very carefully. I don't know where the ship is. You wrote this book. Now, you wrote the stuff to get everybody excited. Now, she has some questions to ask you, and you're going to answer every single one of them. If it means staying here for the next 24 hours and you repeating the same story over and over until she's satisfied. 
Because if you're full of it, I want her to know it. Save us the trouble looking around for Xantorians. Xantorians? That's it. Xantorians. I, I heard Xant something. I, I couldn't get the rest of it, so I couldn't put it in the book. Would you please tell me about these Xantorians? There are very violent people. They believe it is their manifest destiny to conquer and destroy any other race. They're warmongers, murderers. Half cranial fangs. I wouldn't really know anything about that. But I did overhear them talking about looking like everyone else and assimilating into our society. Jack. OK, OK, just, just take it easy. Centaurians? and you're not. It seemed anything I could do to help. Are you all right? How were you able to, to do that? Well, you know what happens when the old adrenaline starts pumping. What was left of my life was in that house. Now they're taking everything, and I don't even know why. Oh, no, Buck's talk! Now, do you believe there are aliens trying to kill me? Yeah, aliens who drive Goodyear Gator backs and start fires with super unleaded. Sounds like an old Santorian trick to me. I'd almost be human. No doubt that's what they would like us to believe. He's right, Jack. If they didn't want to reveal their presence here on this planet, they would very likely attempt to make it look like a human was responsible. I remember when they invaded the Xenos on Volta. Can we not get off the track here? Baltar? That's, that's wonderful. I, I'm looking for the name of a planet in my new book. It's about a group of people who develop a non-conducting laser refractor. Non-conducting laser refractor? There's no such thing. No, no, not yet, but theoretically. It's... Theoretically, it's nonsense. You should stick to non-fiction, Dixon. You're much better at it. I've been invited by a group of people to join them on a ridge in the desert. A new comet was supposed to make its first appearance that night, so we were told. At any rate, we were there watching, waiting, when one of the groups spotted a formation of lights across the desert. Now, these lights hovered together, then moved forward together, and then started to rotate around each other. Look, that could have been a lot of things. It could also have been a Xantorian shuttle, Jack. Whatever it was, it was breathtaking. It got closer and closer. And then it began ever so slowly to edge toward our vantage point, almost as though it were studying us. Definitely Santorians. Want to quit with the Santorian stuff? It got closer. No one moved a muscle. And it made absolutely no noise whatsoever. The next thing I know, it was the following day. We're sprawled all over the ground, and no one can remember anything very clearly at all. All of us had these vague recollections, which ultimately became Night of the Visitors. A friend of mine at work said that uh, most of your group has died since then. That's true. I kept in contact with them for a long time. And then after I wrote the book, I tried to contact them again. That's when I realized that something was happening. None of these people died until your book came out? I can't say for sure. I didn't find out anything until then. So it's possible, then, that none of these people could have been located until the book hit the stands. You know, 
If these Xantorians can do everything you say they can do, why would they have to wait for a bestseller to hit the list before they could find them? I don't know. If these Xantorians can do what you say they can do, they, they could probably find these people real easy. How, Jack? I don't know. However, Xantorians find people. Have you ever hovered over a planet with two billion people on it? Could you spot someone down there? No. But Xantorians could. I guess. Let's just hope we don't run into any more of these guys. Jack, what the hell's going on? You're supposed to be up in the mountains hooking trout, and I'm down here fielding questions from some weird guys wearing blue suits and Ray-Bans and carrying bureau authorization. FBI? Well, what were they asking about? Buck all his car. They're hammering him with a thousand questions he can't answer, and these guys don't want to take no for an answer, if you know what I mean. Well, what are the feds doing poking around Bear Mountain, Vic? Something about a fire. Since when are fires FBI jurisdiction? Hey, since when is uh, Bear Mountain yours? These guys want you, Jack. That's OK with me, as long as they don't have weird flaps on their eyes. Now, how would I know that, Jack? They're wearing sunglasses. Uh, look, Vic, I think I, uh, I think I just stumbled onto something. Oh, jeez. Why am I getting a twisting feeling in my stomach? I'll keep you posted every step. Can you check out some names for me, Vic? Yeah, sure, shoot. They turned a number one bestseller, the Nebula Award winner, into this hat job. I vowed never again to sell another book to Hollywood. Understandably. They made a large mistake in trying to make us believe that there are actual creatures called crater bands. Actually, that was from the book. I don't understand, Dixon. How can you go from the totally believable material you wrote in Night of the Visitors to such, such ludicrous perceptions? How do you know about all of this? How did you know about the Xantorians? How could you remember them when none of us could? I learned of them in much the same manner as you did. I experienced them. I spoke to Maldonado again. People on your list read like an obituary count. Car accidents, heart attacks, drownings. I told you. Yeah, but somehow you neglected to tell me that the FBI was interested. If it was the FBI, Jack? Well, I wasn't thinking that till I was... OK, it occurred to me. But let's assume that it was the FBI. Maybe, maybe they know about the alien ship. Maybe they're trying to keep it quiet. Now, it could be a cover-up, Jack. That certainly would be well, their style. All I can tell you is that we got a couple of heavy hitters on our tails. Now, obviously, they think we know something that they don't want public. There, uh, there was one survivor, uh, Mrs. Edelman. Yeah, she was leaving for Europe the last time I talked with her. They must not have been able to find her. Well, she's home right now. I'm going to go have a talk with her. If I'm not back in one hour, you both leave here. But don't go to the apartment. Just get the hell out of here. Give Ma Lonato a call, I'll tell you what to do. And don't answer the door for anyone. Xantorian or otherwise. If you're going to try hypnotizing me, it's now or never. I think it's the only way. Are you ready to try? Yes. On the alien ship. Expecting me. Oh, I'm afraid she stepped out of the house for a second. I'm her son. Would you like to come in and wait? Sure. So 
you say she'll be back soon, huh? It's kind of important. Well, maybe I can help you. Oh, yeah. Can you answer a question? What? Why are you wearing sunglasses in the house? It's an ophthalmological condition. Doctor's orders. Yeah, I figured it was probably something like that. What's going on? What's wrong with that picture? That's the Edelman family, and you ain't in it. Now put your hands on your head. Turn around real slow. What'd you do with Mrs. Edelman? The same thing I'm gonna do with you. Let me rephrase the question. And I want to know what the hell you got going on underneath these glasses. Thought I was gonna die. I want these out. I want the doctor to take them back out. Just shut up. You're told not to expose them to the light. You'll acclimate in a few days, then you'll be able to take them out. Can you go outside yet? I don't think so. It's too bad. We've got to get moving on. Someone may have overheard us and notified the authorities. Just keep your glasses on. What about him? We'll take him with us back to the hangar. You've got to keep going, Dixon. So, so cold. Is that better? Yes. Now, open the hatch, Dixon. It's right in front of you. One of them open the hatch, Dixon? Don't know. Try. Just try, Dixon. Just try. Try harder. Excellent progress. It won't be long now. We're very close. One more time and we'll know. The Jack will return with something. I, I won't have to go back in there. We can't afford to stop, Dixon. Maybe Mrs. Edelman will remember. Time is of the essence. I'm afraid you to... You should be. That is why we have to find them first. You can't just drop out of the sky and land in Los Angeles. Preparations are being made, papers are being created, patience.
He says that is the motel. Is he telling the truth, Doctor? Sodium pentothal makes it difficult to do otherwise. You're going to have to send someone else. You shouldn't have been out there again today. We each have our task to accomplish, Doctor. You are going to cause irreparable damage to your corneas if you're exposed again. Then I won't be exposed. putting over I need to check the star charts sure we should be very close you know if I'd ever written in any of my books that you could find a spot in the desert by a dream of the night sky I would have been laughed right out of the science fiction writer society I don't know why Dixon two constellations of the highest luminosity Centurius and Tucana are visible in the southwestern desert. Now, the cluster you described to me, Sirius, is rarely visible to the human eye. It's simply a matter of tracking its movement in reverse to the night you saw it. That's brilliant. Tara, are you quite certain we shouldn't have waited for Jack? He told us to leave within an hour. We can only hope that he's discovered something with Mrs. Edelman and that he's moving in a similar direction. Thank you, Tara. Thank you for believing me. Why would I not? I suppose I've just gotten used to people thinking of me as a fake these days. Because you use a false name? In a matter of speaking. When I published my first book and sold it to those Hollywood morons who screwed it up, my family was very upset with me because they, they couldn't go around telling everyone how successful their son was or their uncle or their cousin. Put your real name on it, they said. We want to see your face in the bookstores. Well, later, when I published Night of the Visitors, suddenly no one wanted to be associated with me at all. I was completely ostracized by my family and by my peers. My credibility destroyed. All I did was tell the truth. It is a dilemma that is unique to this planet. It is wrong to lie, and yet people do not wish to hear the truth. If it is of any comfort to you, Dixon, I think you did the right thing. Thanks. Nice to have someone in your corner. According to this chart, it should be right over that crest. That could be it. It's certainly big enough to conceal a ship. It looks deserted, though. Many things are not as they seem. Do you think your friends were killed for a deserted building? Let's hope not. See, having a problem with the old cranial fang? The what? Never mind. His surgery is elective, Mr. Breslin. Unlike your own. Elective? What do you mean, like 
plastic surgery or something. You can't just drop out of the sky. Preparations are being made, paper is being prepared. Is he all prepped yet? Couple minutes. I want to know what you're hiding under those sunglasses. What do you care? Well, they're not like extra flaps of skin or anything, right? I told them they were giving you too much juice. They're changing my eye color for a new assignment. It was simple surgery until you almost blinded me. Then you're not hiding aliens or anything like that. What kind of a moronic question is that? Thursby and the girl weren't at the motel. Last chance. Wait a minute, FBI, aliens, cover-up, plastic surgery? What is this, the witness relocation program? You might call it the freelance version. The Bureau offers the service free as needed. We offer a similar service, but it sure as hell isn't free. So what do you do, sell yourself out, give new identities? To who? Drug dealers, assorted mass murderers? Others that approach the uh, Bureau officially but were turned down? It's a beautiful plan, don't you think? And then Charles Calvin and his wacko friends are out there watching falling stars and they see a secret drop. We didn't think anything of it. Next thing you know, this book is all over the media, giving directions, giving locations. And all of a sudden, about 20 miles due north of here, there are wackos crawling all over the countryside looking for this hangar. And you know what? It's just a matter of time before they find it. Well, what is this place anyway? It's an old military hangar, decommissioned in 1942. We pulled it up from the computer. We officially locked it off. If you put top secret on enough papers after a while, people don't even bother to look anymore, except these lunatics. Well, what about this guy, Calvin? What about his group that was abducted by these aliens? What did you do with them? Nothing. We thought we saw some people out there that night. But when we came back, the place was deserted. Obviously, Calvin and his friends had split. When no one came around after that, we thought we were in the clear. That's until this book came out. Wake me in an hour, would you? Give me some time to shave, shower, and shut you down before Letterman. body. Help me sit him up. Oh. 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 Jack, 
you all right? Thank the heavens. I wasn't positive that the anesthetic had already collapsed your synapses. Did you find the ship? There is no ship. No aliens, sir. You had to use that thing. Of course. Let's go. I imagine you're the better shot. All right, stay close. about some criminal relocation program. There are out there, Dixon. There really are. And either you've had an incredible experience or you have an imagination as big as a solar system. Both ways, it makes you a winner. You've just got to keep believing. Right. What do you say to somebody whose life just busted all the hell? Keep your chin up. Don't let it get the best of you. I don't know what to say, Tara. Thank you for trying to help, Jack. I'm sorry you missed your vacation. Well, I'm sorry you missed your flight. But I'm glad that you're going to be around. Well, I was figuring that you could you know, help me take the toaster apart and rebuild Buck's car. Jack. What? Jack, do you know what this is? Look, just because it's green and it's shiny doesn't mean it's a Xantorian energy beacon. Of course not. It's only a piece of Xantorian energy beacon. Jack, it's true. Something was here. 